So, 2020, the year we went from this to this, from this to this, bizarrely, the year I went from this to this. Okay, folks, hope you're doing well. And this video is mainly for my subscribers and those that have been with me along the, the short journey since my first video in, what, I don't know, 10 months ago, I think the first one was. I feel like we're beginning to get to know each other now a little bit. Uh, you're going to know me through my videos, but I'm going to know you through comments and, and through emails. I mean, some emails asking questions, asking my advice on different things, and a hell of a lot of emails just to say hi, which I've got to tell you, uh, this year I really appreciate it. And I promise you this, this video will get back to photography in a minute. Now, when you first start to do videos, you first sit in front of a camera and you start putting videos on YouTube, putting yourself on offer. There are two things I think that are very, very important. I mean, the first rule of YouTube is don't bring people down. And the second point is if you're going to sit in front of a camera and put that on YouTube, then we have a duty to you to be open and straight and honest and truthful. It's no good us saying one thing and then doing another because, well, people can see straight through that for a start and it's unacceptable. Okay, so let's get started. What's it all about? Well, it was back in late 2019 that me and my partner had one of those, you know that you get those like seismic life events that just decimate you. They cut your feet from under you in every sense of the word. I mean, emotionally, financially, in every sense of the word, it just lay you low. We had that at the end of 2019. This is before, you know, the virus, anyone had talked about this virus. We kind of got out of that situation and pretty much started going from scratch. We started this year, I was optimistic. I usually am optimistic. And we started this year, I had a full diary of work and I thought, well, we can scramble up that ladder again. And that's what we fully intended to do. Then along came a virus and then along came a lockdown and so the full work diary turned into an empty one and the trouble is after last year's events there's no meat on the bone do you know what i mean savings forget it month to month hand to mouth you know a lot of people are going through it but we started that way before this virus i worked as hard as i could on promoting my business to get work in i was fighting to get work in and traveling anywhere nationwide to get the work traveling to the work. I mean, you know, booking yard shoots, equine yard shoots, where I go along, I shoot as many horses as I can talk them into. Just work, keep that shutter working. Yeah. And so that's what I was doing. And to such an extent, it looked promising actually. And uh, because if you're prepared to travel around enough, you can find the work, it's as simple as that. You know, you can't wait for the work to come to you. That's what I knew, 2020, the work will not come to you or, or not in the quantity that you need it. Logically, I decided, well, I'll go and get it then. I sold a couple of things, I sold a guitar and a lens and so I could buy a caravan, a little caravan, a little towing caravan behind my car, you know, so I could run around the country and do different yard shoots, you know, I've got Highlands, Scotland, anywhere, West Country, Wales, wherever. That was my complete aim. And I just got the caravan. And then three weeks ago, there was a spate of thefts in this area. Now, this used to be a, such a nice, genteel area. There was nothing ever happened because there's no one here. There was never any trouble here. It was always perfect. Anyway, now, since the virus and since the, since the economic mess, thieves are doing the rounds around here, um, stealing the catalytic converters off cars for scrap. Because, um, as you probably know, catalytic converters have got platinum, palladium, uh, rhodium in them. And so they're quite valuable for scrap. And the bastards cut mine out on my car. I took it to the garage to get a price to repair it. And I don't have the money. I can't afford to repair my car. I absolutely cannot afford to repair my car. So that's left me in a position. Now the position is I cannot ply my trade and pursue my work all over the country like I was doing. And like I would planned to do to get me through this winter. So what do you do? Well, what I decided, I can only do what I can do, which is obviously work locally. And as I say, it's a remote area, so there isn't much work to be had. There's always product photography. So I, I've upped my game on the product photography. Obviously, I'll take any local work that I can get, any beach shoots, although it's out of the season. I've also started giving guitar lessons. 
This is strange because it never occurred to me before. Playing for 40 years, I must have learned something I can pass on. Yeah, you've got to do whatever you can do. I mean, right now, I dig ditches if someone will pay me. You know, it's, it's not a question of what I don't want to do. It's a question of I'll do anything I can do because things are pretty dire. I mean, if the wheels fell off this completely, I might be homeless in a month, along with an awful lot of other people. You know, this isn't a sort of, oh, poor me. This is along with thousands, tens of thousands of other people this year. I'm speaking to you, some of you may be in a similar position. And if you do, man, I empathise with you because this sucks the fat one. It really does. But you just got to keep pushing, keep trying. You just got to because this will pass. Everything passes. All good things pass. All bad things pass. Sometimes it takes a while, but everything passes. I've been on this bloody planet long enough to know that everything passes. Keep pushing and don't let people break you through not believing in you. Don't let that happen. Don't let it happen. No one's got a right to do that to you. Anyway, lightening up a little bit. So, what's happening with the channel? Well, the channel obviously is going to follow me around all the time I've got access to internet. I will keep shooting videos and take you along on the journey with me on um, how this ex-working photographer either gets back to being a working photographer or at least survives till better days. So, it might be interesting... It might be like watching a train wreck in slow motion. By the way, it might be entertaining, you know. So, yeah, what's this about going back to shoot and film? Well, yeah, I, this is something that's been with me for years because I come from, I come from film, you know. I mean, my first camera. Where is my first camera? What the hell is it? Hello, where's my first camera? My first camera, which I will probably put a cutaway in in a minute when I can find the bloody thing. I bought it in 1974, I bought it new. And uh, so, yeah, I come from film. It's as simple as that. And it's where I tend to go back to uh, when I'm stressed. As I've noticed, since I haven't had any shoots for the last three weeks, that I haven't taken my digital camera out of the case. It sits there. I don't use it. I only actually use it for work. Now, it never really occurred to me. That's how I feel about it. Don't get me wrong. Don't misunderstand me. Digital photography is absolutely awesome. It really is. I mean, I appreciate every bit of the technology, and I use it to its fullest. I was a late adopter to digital, but I, I took to it like a duck to water. But at times like this, I turn to film. I'm a creative person, musician and photographer, so I use music and I use cameras to express and to ground me i prefer very mechanical cameras that come from the days when i was quick on my feet with with photography you know and people say film slows you down yeah not much it doesn't have to i mean just witness david bailey at a, a, a fashion show with his rolly flex didn't slow him down much did it i mean that guy could operate on a rolly i mean this is what people had you know hasselblads whatever you could rock and roll with them you know it's not that slow but generally the process nowadays slows us down because we're used to digital it's just so easy anyone could just grab the camera click yeah they've got a shot there you know it's, it's that easy photography film photography for me is it's the be all and end all for me personally i don't expect sorry hit the mic man but as for me personally, it's a personal thing. I mean, it's still, I'm still going to shoot digital on this channel because, you know, when you've got to, and plus I do get something out of it. I do enjoy the process to a great extent, but not half as much as the totally immersive process of shooting this. This is what it's all about to me. It does everything I want it to do. It's absolutely nothing special. But when I'm going to go out and I need to calm my spirit, I need to go for a walk. I need to go and shoot the world around me and see how I see it that day because all the photographs you take say an awful lot more about you than they do about what you're photographing. So the channel is going to be quite film-centric, but I will try and keep it even with digital as well. Follow me on this journey that I'm going on if you're interested. You're welcome to come along. You really are. I, I need the company. I really do appreciate you guys. And you guys that have been emailing and sending messages, God bless you.